All right. We're back. And better than ever. Yes, absolutely. All right, Dad. So, title of today's video, what we're going to be talking about yes. is... How, oh, to buy, how to buy a car with bad credit? How to buy a car with bad credit. We've gotten this question a lot in the comments. It was actually on a relatively recent video. I think it was one of the most upvoted comments that was on the page. And so why not? Let's talk about it. You spent a long time in the business. And something tells me that over those 40 plus years, you had people that had incredible credit. Actually, yeah, you've told me some stories about some of the people who had truly incredible credit. Yeah. Um, and some people who probably had... Well, truly, incredibly bad credit. I actually remember you. there was a short stint where you worked at a Mercedes-Benz dealership and you literally couldn't do it. Because the, the people had, so many people had such bad credit that, that they figured, well, if they couldn't get a loan to buy a car, they might as well not get the loan to buy the Mercedes they really want. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you were like, yeah. I just can't sell cars here. This makes no sense. No. At least no. not Mercedes Benz. No. So anyway, so yeah. So today, let's go through, and if you can, share your wisdom with us. What should we know if we're going to try and buy a car with bad credit? Have a job. And have the ability to be able to pay back some type of loan if you're able to get one. And 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 I don't mean that to be facetious, but, you know. Could you actually start with, like, what is qualified as bad credit? Or, you know, we, we've talked about tiers in the past. And well, below 500 credit score, 500 to 550 credit score would be considered bad credit. Subprime. You know, subprime, difficult to get loans. Um, haven't handled past credit obligations particularly well um so it's a little bit of a red flag to any potential uh, lender moving forward right. so so you know what what can you do if you're in that situation to uh, perhaps sway a lending institution's decision making cash down the more cash down you can bring the, the stronger the likelihood somebody's going to give you a loan. Yeah. If you're looking at a, I don't know, say a $10,000 car and you have $3,000 to put down, well, there's a finance manager that can argue with a bank that there's 3,000 reasons why you're, you're not going to let this loan go bad. Yeah. You don't want to lose that $3,000 that you saved so long and hard for. So you'll do whatever it takes to keep making car payments so you don't lose that $3,000. If you come in and you look at that same $10,000 car with $300 down, there's no argument for the for the finance guy, hey, come on, man, he could lose three hundred bucks. Or, you know, that's that's not going to persuade anybody to do anything. So cash down, and the more cash down you have, is it similar to like when you get a mortgage and to avoid what is it like MIP or PMI or whatever PMI. it is, you have to put down twenty percent. Is yes. there a threshold with an auto an auto loan where well, you kind of hit a, a you know a tipping point? Well, certainly because. You know, you've heard me talk in the past about how banks will loan up to maybe 140% of MSRP or 140% or yeah. of, uh, of, uh, of loan value yeah. uh, on a used car. Yeah. Um, and, and that's all based on credit score. So if you're in the 550, 500 to 550 range, the bank might go, yeah, we'll lend 90%. Of loan value. Mm -hmm. If you're below 500, the bank might go. We won't lend more than 75 percent of loan value. And so that gives that would then suggest you have to put up 25 percent as the or down more. payment. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know there's things like taxes and tags that get factored in. So the larger the down payment you have, the the, the stronger the case a finance manager can make for uh, a bank to be able to say yes. And then there's other things that you're going to need to. Be prepared to do. Um, if, if you have bad credit, yeah. and you know you have bad credit, don't shop every dealer and have everybody run your credit trying to find a bank that's going to say yes. Because if suddenly there's 40 or 50 inquiries on your credit report, the banks are going, we don't want to touch this guy. Okay, so narrow down what it is that you want, narrow down what dealer you want to try and do business with, and then go there. And, and there's certain things you're going to need if the bank does say yes. And, and be prepared. Come with your pay stubs. They're going to want to see um, two or three or four 
weeks or maybe even a couple months worth of pay stubs. They want to see that, that what you claim to be a yearly income is actually verifiable by what's on your pay stubs. If you remember, I mean, I'm very fortunate that I don't have bad credit, but I have very limited credit history. Yes. And I bought a house a couple of years ago, like three years ago, something like that. Yes. And I, and I remember going through the process of they're like, you don't really exist. So we need to have six months worth of pay history. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that is crazy. But it was what I had to do because I didn't exist. Yeah. You know, so I'd imagine if Until you're Until you did exist. Yeah, yeah. So I would imagine exist in the sense that you can, like, I didn't have a big credit profile. Yeah. And so I'd imagine if you're in a, a challenged credit position, just like you said, they might want more than the the typical range of, of information. Well, one of the issues that I remember we used to run into is people would say, well, you know, I, I make $800 a week. And then they'd bring in pay stubs that show they make $500 a week. Well, you, you, it makes it a lot more difficult to get you approved for a loan if you start by, I don't know, lying on the credit application. So you need to make sure that what information you're putting down is verifiable with the pay stubs that you're going to be asked to bring. They're also going to ask you to bring utility bills that show the address that you're claiming that you live at. If you're renting, they're going to want to see a signed lease agreement and that the lease is in your name for that yeah. apartment. Um, they're going to want references. Like, really? Oh, yeah, like maybe... I don't know, six to ten references, wow. names and addresses and phone numbers of people that they can contact in case, I don't know, you stop making your payments and you fall off the face of the earth. So you need to be prepared to be able to provide some subprime lender with all the ammunition so that it'll make it easier for them to finally say yes to your car loan. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. And so one question I have is, we talk a lot in some other videos about you should get financing options through the dealership, but also independently as well. Yes. And you caution, you know, don't get 30 inquiries. No. We have talked about, though, how it, so long as they're within a 30-day period, they're kind of considered one. But I guess my question to they're you... They're not when they're coming from... From, from someone's subprime. No, and they're not when they're coming from eight or ten different dealerships. Okay, if, if you're going to one or two dealerships, yeah, they, they can go, okay, he's trying to buy a car. That's not what I've been told. If, if, he, if it's eight or ten dealerships, he can't buy a car, and he's just trying to find somebody that will finally say yes. She might be able to buy a car. And she might be, and she might not be, but, but that's a red flag. No, no, okay, potential understood, lenders. understood, understood, understood. That's all I'm saying. I, I understand. Yes. I guess my question was going to be, should you still go through that process of trying to secure your own financing? Because I imagine there are a lot of, um, what's the what's the right word to say this, kind of fishy <laughs> options that if you, there are a lot of opportunities to take advantage of people potentially that have subprime credit. Yes. And so I wonder, is looking for financing options outside of the dealership actually as Recommended credit unions. Credit if, unions. If okay. you're not a member of a credit union, join a credit union. Okay. Okay. Credit unions tend to look at their members uh, with a more favorable eye than, say, a subprime lender or, okay. or a bank. That's a really good insight. Okay. Uh, and and there are different types of credit unions you can join. Like I, I remember, I was a member of the NASA. Federal Credit Union. Yeah. Now, you know that I that other than watching a spacecraft lift off, I have nothing to do with NASA. But by opening a savings account for twenty five dollars, I could become a member to NASA. Understood. Okay, so it doesn't take a lot to be to join a credit union. So join a credit union and and see if maybe they can help you. Um, and then there's, you know, the typical buy here, pay here lots. And that's what I was kind of alluding to. Like, you could get taken advantage of there. You, you will think... be taken advantage of there because they're going to require cash down. Typically, the cash down that they require is enough to cover their expense in the car. Wow. Okay? So that... That's scary to think of. So if, if you're buying a $5,000 car at a buy here, pay here lot, and they want a minimum of, say, $2,500 to cover your taxes, license, and down payment. So that means that they own the car for about about $2,000. And... Understood. And, the, and they're only, you know, and they're hoping you never go bad, but when you do, they've at least covered the cost of the car. 
and everything else is just pure profit at that point for them. But buy here, pay here is a way to go. But you have to make sure that that buy here, pay here store reports to the credit bureaus. Because if they don't report to the credit bureaus, then you're not getting credit for having taken care of a credit obligation. Yeah, it's a good point. So little things that you have to look out for. It's a good point. A yeah, good well, point. I'm full of points. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. So is there anything else to consider if you're in a challenged credit situation when you before you head into a dealership or anything like that, or kind of covered your bases? No, big down payment. Big down lot. payment. You're going to have to build a case for support. Yes. Um, and you you know look at credit unions as an option. And 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 don't and don't be looking at thirty thousand dollar cars. Yeah. And, and you know I mean you have to be realistic in 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 what it is that you want to drive. I understand that that you might want to drive a really really nice car. But nobody's going to lend you the money to be able to do that. So, so accept the fact that you're going to drive something less than maybe what you wanted it to be. But that make sure it's reliable so that you can use it. You can you can make the payments. You can rebuild your credit so that you won't find yourself in this position again three years from now or four years from now. Really well said, Ben. Well, I try. Thanks for your time. You're welcome, honey.